Hey Shalom, first and foremost, and give all praise and glory unto Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shah, Bashem, Kakadash, the honor to the apostles of Great Millstone, all into truth from, and peace to the Ateshi Akiyam, to the elect that are scattered across the four corners of this earth, pushing the truth and faith and sincerity. On the Rosh Allah from the GMS used to camp, and this lesson is going to be a continuation, you know, from my last lesson. Going into the Romans, Romans, the ninth chapter, I left off. At the 14th verse, so I'll pick up right here on the 15th verse. All right, this is just all through the spirit, you know. The willing, I'm just, you know, able to finish the whole chapter. All right, but this is Romans 9 15. It says, For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. Right, because up here it said that the most I loved Jacob and he hated Esau. Because like the most I can do whatever the hell you want to do. All right? Simple. He's the most I. So then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but the most I, the show of mercy. So it's not about your works, <laughs> you know, what you do, because hey, your your destiny or your life, right, however you want to put it, is already, the most I already chose what you're going to be. Right? You, can't, you can't do a certain amount of works Right to change what the Most High has set up. But the Most High has deemed you to be the wicked. That's what you're going to be. There's nothing you can do. You can't change it. Right? No matter what, what you do on the planet Earth, you're going to be that. All right? The Most High is in control of, every, of, of, of everything. All right? And, and for, the, for us, right, the hopeful elect, <laughs> you see, Hey, you just got to be the elect to be saved. It's nothing you can do to be the elect. The most high is going to show that mercy. Right? You can't you can't work your way right into salvation if you are not of the elect. Simple. If you ain't to be destroyed, that's just what it's going to be. For the scripture said unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might that I might show my power in thee. And that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Right? The most I exalted his name. Right? From raising up Pharaoh, he raised up a great kingdom, which was that Egyptian um, kingdom. You see, hey, and they were they were on top, living good. You see, people was giving reverence to Pharaoh. The most I set this man up in, in a top position. Right? Just so he can bring him down and have his name exalted. All right, but it's mentioned in him because he's doing the same thing with Esau, Edom. All right, he did. The, he's doing the same thing. He's raising this man up to a, uh, a high level. He brought his kingdom to a high level, but then now he's taking it down. You see, everyone you know was afraid of America once upon a time because they America had the nukes, this and that. All right, ready? They ready to drop bombs, but now a. Hey, like it says in Isaiah 14, that the nations, like, are thou become like unto us? Are thou weak as we? Hey, because America ain't the only one with nukes. You see, so, hey, the, the playing field has been leveled. All right? So the Mosai is about to take this man out, and he's going to be exalted, just like he was in ancient Egypt. And this new spiritual Egypt, so therefore had he mercy on whom he will have mercy and whom he will he hardeneth. Thou will say then unto me, Why do it he yet find fault for who have resisted his will his will? Right. Like alright, the most eyes in control and he made people good or he made people wicked. How can he be mad at them? How can he hit Esau if he made him wicked? Why did he do this? Why did he do that? Verse twenty, neighbor old man. Who are thou that replies against the Most High? Shall a thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Hath not the pot of power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? Right, because he can do whatever the hell he want to do. He create, he can make the creation how he wants to make it and feel whatever way he, he want to feel about it. Jeremiah 18 and 1, the, the word which came to Jeremiah from Yahweh saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will cause thee to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and, be, and behold, he wanted work on the wheels. 
and the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. So he made it again another vessel as seemed good to the potter to make. So he made one and he basically messed it up, <laughs> you see, or he made it a way that he didn't like, right? Saying the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter. Let's go into this word. It says ruins, right? Strong's H7843, Shakas. Right? It says to destroy, corrupt. <laughs> go ruin, decay. And, and he corrupted Esau, right? Be corrupted, spoiled, be injured, ruined, broaden, to pervert, right? Hey, this this is this is the same spirit. Hey, he he put in this man in a spirit that is not upright, a wicked spirit. All right, so Esau was marred. <laughs> All right, but then hey, it says so he made it again another vessel that seemed good to the potter to make. Right, something that he was pleased with. Then the word of Yahweh came to me saying, "O house of Israel, cannot I do with you as this potter said to Yahweh?" Behold, as the clay is in the potter's hand, so are ye in mine hand, O house of Israel. Right? And it's not just Israel, it's everybody. Because you go to 18 and 1. He that liveth forever hath created all things in general. The Lord only is righteous, and there is none other but he. Who governed the world with the palm of his hand. You see, he governed the world with the palm of his hand. And all things obey his will. Alright, so A. Everybody is the clay, and he's the potter, and he forms and makes us how he wants us to be. It says, for he is the king of all, by his power dividing holy things among them from profane. All right, let's go back to Romans 9 and 21. Had not the potter power over the clay of the, the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and one unto dishonor, and the vessel unto honor is the elect. These are the ones that the most I have has pleasure in, the ones that are destined for salvation, the ones that are being conformed to the image of his son, Yahweh Shai, and another unto dishonor. All right, that's that's Esau and the wicked, right? Two thirds of our people along with that. They are vessels unto dishonor. The most I did this, he, he made it like this, you see? Hey, but two thirds of our people, they will come back as vessels of honor in the kingdom you know, after they be destroyed on this side. All right, but Esau will always be a dishonor. You see, he is the wicked. And uh, they are base, as the scriptures say. They are the lowest of the low. It says, what if the most I will to show his wrath and to make his power known, endure it with much long suffering, the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. Hey, Esau is perfect for for destruction. This is why <laughs> the most like, hey, he really created them just to destroy them. He let them be as wicked, right, as they can be, because he is the wicked. And he saw he's doing his job, right, in perfection. Right, but the but hey, even that don't mean nothing. Hey, even though that the most I made him this way, the most I still gonna destroy him. Right. He endured it and he's he's long suffering, right? Because he wants this man to do what he, what he going to do to exalt himself to the highest that he could possibly exalt himself. And then show his wrath and make his power known and make his name known. It says, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory. Which is talking about the elect. Those are the ones that were afore prepared unto glory. The ones who he was going to have mercy on. Those are those vessels. Even us, whom he had called, not of the Jews only, but also the Gentiles, right? Because you had the Israelite foreigners. That's what that's the Gentiles he's talking about, the ones that are called. And Mosiah ain't dealing with these different nations like he's dealing with Israel. All right. So when you see Gentiles there, you gotta you gotta know the proper context and what it's talking about. It ain't just talking about the heathens and all these different nations. No, our people were made Gentiles. You see, it's talking about the Israelite foreigners, the ones who were living like the Gentiles, because they were a, it was a falling away. If you read Jeremiah seventeen, it speaks about the Most High cutting us off from our heritage, All right? And and 
we fell away during the time, right, of Antiochus, right, the, you know, the Greeks, you see, we began being Hellenized, you read about that in the book of First Maccabees, right, but ultimately, you know, we, we, we fell away ultimately, right, during, during these times, right, because hey, we forgot everything, you see, when Paul spoke about there being a the fall in the way, hey, and he was talking about how, you know, we fell away from our heritage after, you know, starting 70 AD, coming over here into slavery, having everything, you know, beaten and whipped up out of us. All right. Hey, and we all became Gentiles. You see, so, hey, this scripture was, hey, it applied to us as being Gentiles. Right, we were Gentiles in the beginning. Right, Israelite foreigners. As he said also in OC, I will call them my people which are not my people, and her beloved which is not beloved. So who are the people that were not his people? Right? That he was gonna call his people. Let's go to the book of Hosea because hey, it said, as he also said in OC. Let's look at this. Strong's G fifty six seventeen OC. Jose, right? And it says, Hosea, the well known Hebrew prophet. So it's talking about Hosea. So when you see this, hey, OC, he's talking about Hosea. So Paul is quoting something. He's getting, he's quoting a scripture from the Old Testament, right? So what does that tell you? Go back to the source to find out what he's talking about. So we're going to go to the book of Hosea. We're going to start at, let me see, verse 9. Then said the Most, I call his name Lo Ami, for ye are not my people. Let me see. I'll start at 5. And shall come to pass the day that I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. Right? So the context, the most I was talking about Israel. So just understand that. And she conceived again and buried a daughter. And the most I said unto him, Call her name Lo Ruhamah, for I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel. But I will utterly take them away. You see? But I will have mercy upon the house of Judah and will save them. And will save them by Yahweh their power, and will not save them by bow, nor sword, nor by battle, by by horses, nor by horsemen. You see, so hey, we ain't gonna save ourselves, basically. The most I gonna do this. All right. So there ain't no need to rise up and do what we gotta do trying to take take this man down by force and now the most I got it. But it says now when she went, Laruama, she conceived and bear a son. Then said the most I call his name Lo Ami. For ye are not my people, and I will not be your power. See, so he's telling us to Israel that you are not going to be my people. I'm not going to have mercy on y'all. I will no more have mercy on you, and, and you're not going to be my people. All right? Why? Because we was worshiping different gods. We cast off the Most High. We forsook the Most High, so he forsook us. Right? But ultimately, hey, he did have mercy. Why? Because, hey, because we was waking up to this truth of who we were or who we are. It says, yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. It shall come to pass, and the place where it is said unto them, Ye are not my people. There shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living power. Hey, this was the place where it said we were not people, because we forgot. Right? And you got these different nations saying that we're not the Israelites. But hey, according to prophecy, we are the Israelites. Right? The place is America. Right? Now it says, there shall be said, ye are the sons of the living power. The Most High sent sent his spirit down, right, unto a man, right, named Alva Bivens, right, also who was Elijah back then, right, many, many, many years ago. He was John as well, right, John the Baptist, right, put the spirit in him to, to teach, Right, and it's where it's been spreading like wildfire ever since then. It says then, no, that's, that's really it. So let's go back to Romans 9. 
26. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it says to them, You are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living power. See, hey, so it's coming back from Hosea. This is what, this is what I just read. Isaiah also cried concerning Israel, though the number of the children of Israel be at the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. So the context is Israel. All right, so when it's talking about these Gentiles up here, it's talking about the Israelites. It says, For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness, because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. <laughs> All right, it's going to be easy work for him. And Isaiah said before, Except the Lord of Sabaoth, which is the Lord of armies, had left us a seed, we had been at Sodom and been made like unto Gomorrah. It's talking about hey, if the Most High didn't have the elect, hey, the Most High would have just destroyed this whole place. Right, but he got the elect here, and he has to deliver the elect before he do anything. What shall we say then? That the Gentiles, which follow not the righteousness, have, a, have attained righteousness, even the righteousness which of faith. You see, because Yahweh shot is that righteousness. Right, believing in Yahweh Shah, that's how the Gentiles, the Israelite foreigners, got their righteousness through him. You see, let me see. Romans 3 21. But now the righteousness of the Most High without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets. Even the righteousness of the Most High, which is by faith of Yahweh Shah Mashiach, unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. So the the righteousness is the faith in Yahweh Shah. Right? Romans 9. I said 30 again. What shall we say then? That the Gentiles, the Israelite foreigners, which follow not the righteousness, what is that? That's the law, that's the commandments. They wasn't brought up in the law, that's the commandments. They were being called the uncircumcision that we read in Ephesians, the second chapter. I have attained to righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith. So, they were righteous through the faith in Yahweh Shah, even though they wasn't keeping the law a hundred percent. Even Acts the fifteenth chapter, right? The apostles laid out, you know, the foundation of what they should keep. All right? Ultimately, is that belief in Yahweh Shah. You see, but the law is not done away with. You know, the law is still meant. To to be kept to the best of your ability, right? It just can't be kept 100% because we're in captivity, right? And we need mercy, right, for being in these bodies. And we, we are in captivity. It says, but Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, had not attained to the law of righteousness. It's the guys that make it about the law, the law, the law, the law. They're not even perfect, right? They're trying to make it of themselves and cast them where you always shot. That ain't righteousness. Right? That ain't the way no more. That way has been put away, right? Of trying to be saved through the law, of trying to be righteous through the law. Right? But it says, Wherefore, because they started not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law, for they stumbled at that stumbling stone. As it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and rock of offense. And whosoever believed on him shall not be ashamed. And that's Yahweh shall. They are the stone that he was gonna that they were gonna stumble at, right? Looking to him for salvation. Looking to him for their righteousness. They didn't want to do that. And they stumbled over that and it would be their destruction. But whoever believes in him shall not be ashamed. Alright, so that's the lesson. Hope this was edifying. With that, I'm going to say Shalom.